If you're interested in full-time RVing and you're just getting started in the process of selecting which RV is best for you, today we're gonna to be comparing a Class A motorhome for full-timing versus a fifth wheel for full-timing in. So we're gonna go over all the pros and cons and at the end, we'll kinda of go over the um, financial aspect of it to give you your overall investment for both options. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Again, today we're gonna to be comparing a Class A motorhome versus fifth wheel, specifically for full timing. Um, so this isn't really gonna be as super as relevant if you're just like using it for camping on the weekends here and there. And if you're new to our channel, I'm Jen, and behind the camera is my husband, Will, and we make travel vlogs on Sundays, and then on Wednesdays we do RV tip kind of videos like this. So if you're interested in videos like that, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss future videos from us. But we're gonna actually jump over to the motorhome first and show you guys some of the pros if you're looking at a class a motorhome for full timing in okay right off the bat i think one of the big pros to a motorhome especially uh, class a i should say is the drivability um i think it is a little bit easier to just hop in and go especially if you don't have a toad if you have a toad behind your motorhome it might play a little bit of a factor into that but overall that nice big windshield you have a good view um you can kind of hop in and go you don't have to get a bunch of things hooked up and for anyone new to rv and what is a toad Toad is just like a tow behind vehicle. Yeah. So. And most of the time, if you have a motorhome, um, you would either tow a vehicle, or sometimes yeah. people will also, if they have like multiple people in their party, sometimes they'll actually drive chase. a vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, they'll have a chase vehicle. Again, it really comes down to how you're going to use it in full time. If you're full timing, I can't imagine you not wanting a second vehicle. You know, I think there are some people who do it without a second vehicle, yeah, but it'd get e pretty tough. So, you know, you just gotta weigh all of that. But overall, I think the majority of full timers are gonna wanna have a motorhome and a yeah. toad. Okay, so we're kind of by the door, so I'll use this opportunity to talk about the access and getting in and out of your campsite. You know, one thing I actually do like about a motorhome is the fact that you can really just hop in and go. You don't have to go out and around and hook it up. If there was ever an emergency, like if you were getting some bad flood or something and you had a couple minutes to get out, hey, lift up those leveling jacks, pull the slides in and let's go. Yeah, you don't even worry about your other vehicle. Right, you don't worry about your other vehicle. You don't even have to get outside to do all that stuff, honestly. You know, all your controls are inside and you can be doing multiple things at once that way. So from a safety aspect, there's pros and cons to both. Again, we'll talk about some of the fifth wheel pros later, um, but that is one pro for the motorhome. Something else on the outside is check out like all this storage you get in a, in a motorhome. There are some fifth wheels that are gonna have better storage than this, but I think for the most part, most of the time motorhomes are gonna have more storage than a fifth wheel. On the exterior. On the least. exterior, yeah. Now, if exterior storage is a big thing for you, then you might wanna look at some of the fifth wheels with more storage, and you might find that the fifth wheel is better, but I'd say 90% of the time the motorhome is gonna be better. Okay, coming around to the back, this Jayco has a 5,000 pound hitch. What I really do like about this, again, on a motorhome side, is the fact that if you're not towing another vehicle, you can have something else to hook up. So if you're really into boating, or you like your ATV, or your golf cart at the campground, whatever it is, you can still hook up another trailer back here. And even if you have another vehicle, you can use that as a chase vehicle if you have a second driver. And with a fifth wheel, you're gonna have to have your truck and the trailer. Yes, some fifth wheels you can tow behind technically, but a lot of states it's illegal in. And to be honest, guys, it's really not safe unless you really, really know what you're doing. So I, I don't recommend that at all. You know, if you wanted to tow a boat and have your fifth wheel, you would need two tow vehicles and two trailers. Mm -hmm. Where this, you could do the motorhome, the trailer, and a chase vehicle if you want. Okay, coming around to this side, you'll see right here is your gas fill up. Most motorhomes have about a 90 gallon gas tank, which is really, really nice. So our truck, I believe it holds about 36 gallons. And the mile to the gallon is probably about the same in this motorhome as it is our truck. But the nice thing is, is that this is gonna get you three times as far as our truck will because it's just got a bigger tank. And I really like that because it, it gets old stopping for gas all the time. Yeah, when we're towing, like if it's a drive day, we're stopping multiple times yes, for gas. Yes, yes. Coming up front a little bit more, you'll see the generator pipe. Most motorhomes have generators in them included already. Very few small number of more Class C's don't have them, but for Class A's, I don't know any Class A at this time that doesn't have a generator. 
where um, with a fifth wheel, it's almost always an option, and generators are hard to come by nowadays, but they are really nice when you're um, out boondocking or whatever. Up front, since this is a, a gas motor home, the engine's up front. A pro to that is that if there ever is, let's say you have this and you have a toad behind you, if there ever is an issue with one of your vehicles, you know, and I, I specifically call it, you have two engines, but really you have two whole vehicles, you have another operating one. If your toad breaks down and you don't have any cell phone reception or whatever it is, you can, you can take the motorhome out, go get help, come back, or go get a trailer and tow it out or whatever it is, and vice versa. If the motorhome breaks down, you can hop in your tow vehicle, you know, go get parts, go get help, go get whatever you need. Where with a fifth wheel, if your tow vehicle dies, you can't drive your trailer. Yeah, you're kind of SOL. <laughs> That's right. Cool, I think that wraps up the outside. You wanna jump on the inside? Yeah, I'll show cool. some of the interior pros of okay. a motorhome. All right, moving inside, we're inside this Jayco Precept. And one thing that stands out to me that I, I think is a big pro on the interior side of a motorhome is you almost always have a, a dedicated um, second sleeping space. So in class A's, most of the time you'll have a drop down bunk like this that, that comes down on a motor. And in class C's, a lot of times it's built in um, over the driving area. So that's something that's nice because it's not as common to get a fifth wheel with like a, a separate bunk space. Now, of course, if you have kids and you're looking at a towable you're, or a fifth wheel specifically, you're probably going to look for something that has a, a bunk space. But maybe you're a couple like us and we don't really need a separate room for somebody to sleep, but it is nice when we have guests that they have their own bed and we don't have to like pull a couch out in the living area. So I really like how motorhomes have that second sleeping space along with the pull out couches. Okay, another really nice thing, um, and I think again, this is just like a big pro for people on why they might choose a motorhome, is the fact that you have a really, really nice driving area, and just the fact that you have access to your whole RV while you're going down the road. So you might have heard people talk about this, the fact that you can get up and go to the bathroom, some people will lay on the bed, might not be exactly recommended safety-wise, but you can do it if you want to. And then also just like the seats are nicer, like these are definitely like more comfortable looking than our truck seats. So I would definitely say like the experience, like when you're driving, it's much more comfortable, you have access to a lot more. Whereas when you're in a fifth wheel, you're stuck in the truck for the whole road trip. It's gonna feel like a normal road trip you're used to where you're just stuck in the car the whole time. Okay, another really nice thing about motorhomes is that they make them so that when the slides are in, when you're going down the road, that you still can access it. Um, because obviously, like I said, that's the benefit to a motorhome is that I can still get around here. And now I will say some motorhomes are better than others in terms of like how much of a hallway you have. Um, so you definitely want to look at that more specifically for the unit you're looking at. But most of the time you can get back to the bathroom. You can get back to the bedroom and hopefully use the bed um, and even get access to the dinette. You could be sitting in the dinette. Th these um, dinette, I believe, have, yeah, it does have seat belts. These have seat belts. So if you have a lot of people traveling with you, like you have your kids with you, um, they can sit back here and be really comfortable when you're going down the road. Okay, so that kind of wraps up the pros in terms of like interior stuff on a motorhome. Honestly, um, the convenience and usability of it when you're going down the road is the big key with motorhomes. The actual interior being nicer, that's where you're going to have more pros on the fifth wheel side. So we're going to actually jump into the fifth wheel now um, and show you guys some of the pros of doing a fifth wheel for full time instead. All right, we're over here back at the fifth wheels. So today we're gonna compare it to an Alliance uh, Paradigm 390 MP. This was my first choice to compare it to, but um, inventory is a little limited these days. So we will use this one and we'll talk about what makes this a great floor plan and not for full timing. Um, but overall, this actually is a popular floor plan for full timing in. All right, so we're gonna kick it off right up front first. Well, as you can see, the overall fifth wheel on the outside is much bigger, I feel like, and just a little bit more bold, which is gonna be really nice for the inside and really even the outside, kind of giving you your own little space, I always feel like. Up front here, you'll see the fifth wheel hitch. That's where you're gonna hook up, and that's what we talked about a little bit earlier, that you can't just necessarily like jump in the driver's seat and go. There is a little bit involved with hooking up. In my opinion, I think people over-dramatize it a little bit, because we've gotten into a system where we can hook up pretty quick now. 
Um, especially with the auto leveling system, you know, you can hit buttons and just hit retract all or, the, you know, to retract the front once you get connected and pick up your blocks and all that as it's raising the front jacks. So there's definitely things that they've done to make it a lot easier, a lot quicker to hook up. So again, yeah, it's a little bit of a con to a fifth wheel, but people use that as a big deciding factor. And I think this day and age, it shouldn't be that big of a deciding factor anymore. We talked about generators earlier. And again, with a fifth wheel, the generator is gonna be more of an option usually, like in this one, especially if you're doing a full profile fifth wheel. Mid pros don't necessarily have um, generator options even, but most full profiles do. So this is something you can order from the factory um, or you can have the dealer install it. But again, usually it's not gonna come standard with a generator. And that's some of the stuff too we'll talk about at the end with the all-in investment. Yes. You know, because we'll also, with the all-in investment, we'll consider, you know, if you're if you're trying to be able to boondock, yep. that cost that goes into it as well. Correct, yep. Overall, again, look at the awning space on this. I feel like this has a lot more awning coverage than a motorhome does. This fifth wheel, I believe it's 43 feet long. So like the Jayco we were comparing it to, I think is around 35 feet. So it's almost 10 feet more. And you can see a lot of that is awning space. The other thing is too, is in a fifth wheel where your cab is, you're not gonna get awning space. Where with this, it's almost to the front. Yeah. You know, the amount you're limited on is very small. You get tons of outdoor camping space in a fifth yes. wheel, I feel like. Now, we talked about storage earlier on the outside with the motorhome. And here's the deal, there's no doubt in this fifth wheel um, that the motorhome probably has more. But what I will say where the storage takes the lead with the fifth wheel is the accessibility, I would call it, and the ease with this. With a motorhome, I always feel like it's like this and you're crouched under and you're trying to dig in. Where this, I'm standing up and I can pretty much see everything All in here. Stuff, yeah. You can also put the um, more ride racks in, or what, it, what the, do they call Oh, the pull-out trays. The pull-out trays in yeah. here, um, if you want a little bit more room. I feel but, like with the with the motorhome too, we didn't really talk about this, but it, even if the, the storage space, say it's like the same square footage, with the motorhome, your storage is definitely segmented up. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the fifth wheel, it's usually like this big pass-through space. Yes. So one thing you'll need to consider is that you probably will have to buy like some totes. Like yes. that's what we have just to organize your stuff because this is like a big open space. And if you just threw stuff in there, it'd get really messy, get really fast. Really quick. Yeah. Um, whereas the motorhome, it's probably easier to organize it. Yeah. But then when you have bigger things that you just want to like slide through, um, like mm -hmm. we've put our whole fold up e-bike in here. Yeah. You can't really do that with a motorhome. Right. So it's no, pros and cons. Point. Yeah. Okay, right around here on the back, again, like I talked about earlier, this fifth wheel is rated to tow 3,000 pounds technically. I do not recommend that. You really better know what you're doing if you're gonna do that. But the nice thing is, is that you do have this hitch clear, whereas if you're having a tow behind a motorhome, you know, this area is gonna be taken up behind the motorhome. So you can't put a, right, a rack here, you know, one of those basket racks or a bike rack or whatever it is. Ladder to get, get up on the roof, and typically, for some reason, a lot more, I see a lot more fifth wheelers with a really, really good solar setup and less on motorhomes. Probably goes back to the generator thing, but also I think there's a bit more room and space and easeability to get up there and add that solar stuff on. Yeah, just like more open space on the yeah, roof for the solar panel. For sure. Okay, so that kind of goes over the exterior of the fifth wheel. Now we're gonna jump on the inside, and I think that's really where a fifth wheel is gonna shine. All right, we're here inside this paradigm and I'm gonna go over some of the interior features again. So as you guys might know, if you watch our channel, we own a fifth wheel. And so I definitely think that we're maybe a little bit biased towards fifth wheels, but um, I definitely could acknowledge where motorhome is probably better. And a lot of times it just depends on your the use and um, your family size and just like how you're going to be full timing. But what I really love about a fifth wheel is just, it's big. Look how big like this living space is. Um, I think when you're full timing, it's like the, the more that it can feel like a home, the better and the more like sustainable full timing is. And I, that's where a fifth wheel definitely to me is more comfortable. So first of all, kitchen space. Kitchen space is almost where I think the fifth wheel does the best in the interior because in a motorhome, it's, you know, even with some of the nicer motorhomes with bigger kitchens, they don't even compare to like what you get in a fifth wheel, especially when you have an island like this. The living area of ours is pretty similar to this, and I love having the island. I just have so much space to cook. 
and I, I'm just as comfortable cooking here almost as like I am in our house um, and so that's where I think the interior of the fifth wheel like that's like it's probably like shining star against the motorhome um, it's gonna be pretty comparable with like you have two couches um, it's definitely like you know overall it's just bigger inside here but let's also head back and look at like the bathroom and the bedroom and how that's different so also real quick, sorry if it's a little dark in here. Um, we are at the dealership today and we were trying to get it plugged in, but we couldn't. We don't have a jump box on us, so hopefully it's not too bad. You can bear with us. But I will say usually a bathroom and a fifth wheel is going to be more spacious. Um, this bathroom is decent and then you can definitely get some fifth wheels that just have incredible bathrooms. For example, I know that there's a Paradigm. What's that floor plan? The 370 FB. The FB front bath. Amazing bathroom. It's nicer than our bathroom at home. Um, it's got a double vanity and like a huge shower. So, um, you know, there's definitely like a lot more options with floor plans when you go to the towable side. side. Um, so it's like you can kind of pick and choose like, like in this one, the bathroom is honestly probably fairly comparable to that Jayco precept we looked at. But if you really care about a bathroom, you can get a fifth wheel with a huge bathroom and you might just lose space in other areas. So I feel like you have more options than a fifth wheel, which I like. And then when you come back here, bedroom is probably pretty comparable. You're usually gonna have more closet space. Um, so again, for full timing, you, you're gonna have more of your clothes with you. It's not like a weekend trip. So I like how you have more closet space. Um, you have more pantry space. Overall, definitely just more storage. So going back again to that point about just the variety you get with fifth wheels in terms of like the floor plan. Um, I love the fact that a fifth wheel is just, it's an empty shell and there's so many more options for like how you can orient the space. So there are fifth wheels where you get a front living room with three couches. Um, there are mm. ones where you get a rear kitchen and it's a huge rear kitchen. And so I feel like depending on what's important to you, you can really get what you want the most out of a fifth wheel. With a motorhome, there's gonna be obviously variations, but the driver's area always has to be at the front. The bedroom's always gonna be at the back. And so there's not a lot of changes you can make and you kinda of have to live with it. To the next point, if you have bunks in a motorhome, so some there are motorhomes that have bunks, it's always gonna be two bunk beds on the side. So specifically, if you're trying to full time with kids, a fifth wheel is probably gonna end up being a better option for you just because that you can get something like this. So in this floor plan, you get what's called a, an MP, multi-purpose room. And this is really nice because um, it, it becomes, this couch becomes a separate sleeping area. And also this can be a desk. Um, you can put, mount a TV there. So it's like a bedroom and um, an office in one. And also with this layout, you get this loft up here. So you get tons of sleeping space. All right, so last thing that we definitely have to touch on in the fifth wheel is the fact that you cannot use this when you're going down the road. We kind of talked about that over on the motorhome side. These slides are really deep, um, which is why you get so much living space when they're out. But when they come in, you cannot really access this and you can't really be, you can't legally be in the fifth wheel going down the road. You shouldn't be, it's very unsafe. So that's, you know, that's the drawback. If you have kids and it works for you to have um, more sleeping space and a fifth wheel just keep in mind that on the drive days you're all stuck in a car you know in a truck uh, cab going down the road so that's definitely the big drawback I, I think overall the themes to think about when you're comparing a class a versus a fifth wheel is class a it's gonna be nice on drive days it's easier to, to just jump in and go maneuverability is is the big pro there Fifth wheel is a little bit bulkier. Um, you can't use it when you're going down the road. It's not as convenient in that aspect on drive days, but once you get to where you're going, if you're staying somewhere for a week or more, having all this living space is super nice. And so I think that's the big key to think about when you're comparing those. Okay, so for the last part of this video, we wanted to touch on the pricing a little bit and what your overall cost is gonna be to get into either of these units and which is better in that regard. So we talked a little bit earlier, and for the most part, it's gonna be fairly equal. What I did was compared a couple of the most common new products. I kept everything new. Um, of course, you could save money by doing use with any of these, but for the purpose of this video, it's just a little too complicated to try to get into used. So, for the Jayco Precept, you guys saw the list price was 170, and typically with that, you're gonna have a toad if you're gonna full time. Most not most, but a lot of people want a Jeep to tow behind when they're full timing. And when I looked it up, it said that the average Jeep Wrangler, and this is totally average, so, you know, if you get the cheapest two-door, of course it's gonna be a lot less. 
Um, and if you get a super nice decked out one, it's gonna be a lot more. But the average was 45, making your overall total investment 215. With the Paradigm, the list price on them are about 110. And, and again, this is before negotiations and all that, but I'm keeping all that consistent again, just for the purpose of this video. And the average new truck, so this is where I kind of played with the numbers a little bit. When I looked it up, it said that a new one ton truck was like, I think it said like 40 or 50, which I think is kind of low, especially in today. So you guys know cost of trucks have been going up. So I, I put that up to 75, making your total all in on that is about 185. So as you can see, um, you'll probably save a little bit by going with the fifth wheel in the truck. Again, you're not having to pay for two motors and two old chassis and transmissions and all that, you know, those extensive components. So it makes sense that the trailer is a little bit cheaper. With that said, there's other factors that are gonna play into it personally for you as well. Like for us, um, we knew that I needed a bigger truck for some of the other work that we do. So we were gonna have to have that truck anyway. So we made sure to get, rather than just a cheaper truck or one that fit just that type of work, we spent a little bit more to get something that would also work for us when we're traveling. The flip side to that is maybe you already have a smaller SUV or smaller car or a Jeep already that you can tow behind. Then the motorhome is probably gonna be a lot cheaper for you. So those are definitely two um, other aspects you have to look into with this. Again, every situation is different, but overall, if you're just completely starting fresh, those are kind of the numbers you're looking at. Two um, last other aspects you gotta account for that are gonna impact you financially are number one, if you are looking to boondock a lot while full, full timing, a generator is probably gonna be something heavy on your mind. So again, a motorhome is gonna probably come with that already. So that's gonna save you. You know, today they're getting pretty expensive. So probably around seven grand. Whereas if you get a fifth wheel, you're gonna have to add that into that cost. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, the last aspect to that that I wanna to touch on is um, the maintenance. The house is gonna be the same. You're gonna to have to maintain your ACs and your slides and all of that stuff, right? But what is different is on a motorhome with a towed, you're not gonna have two engines to take care of or two vehicles to take care of. Twice as many oil changes, twice as, twice as many tire rotations, you know, the transmission to worry about. All of those components are in a sense doubled, but keep in mind, you're not running your tow vehicle typically as much as, you know, you're gonna be driving your motorhome across the country. So keep those factors in mind as well. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. I hope that if you are in that stage of deciding what type of RV you want for full timing and you're possibly looking between a class A motor home and a fifth wheel, that this kind of helped you with making that decision. This video was not never going to be, you know, this one is better than than the other option, because honestly, it all depends on your needs, what's important to you, your family size, how you're gonna use the RV. This video is more to help you um, look at all the considerations and all the things that you need to be thinking about to help make that decision. So hopefully that helped. Um, hopefully touching on that financial aspect as well was helpful for you guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and also hit that subscribe button so you don't miss future videos from us. Like we mentioned earlier, we do a uh, travel style vlog on Sundays and then Wednesdays are more helpful videos like this. So we will see you guys on Sunday for another video and thanks for watching. Bye guys!